Good morning, my name is Perry Karori and my, my partner is Brenda Kolga. And our topic is retrofitting reinforced concrete beams under flexural tension failure by welding on additional reinforcement. Our supervisor is Ms. Panjoki. For introduction, buildings undergo various compromises due to some common causes such as errors during design, those shown below. Two possible solutions exist to stabilize such structures. You can either replace the whole structure or retrofit it. Retrofitting refers to the process of strengthening existing structures to enhance their performance with new technologies. A problem statement due to the damages previously shown, a catastrophic failure may occur, and since complete replacement of the building is expensive, the need to repair, rehabilitate, and strengthen failed elements and above. Objectives. Our general objective was to retrofit reinforced concrete beams and tension by welding on additional reinforcement for specific properties to determine various material properties of concrete and to investigate the effect of on additional investment in improving the flexural strength of the beam and to compare the flexural behavior of the beams related using different treatments. From our literature, we found that been presented on retrofitting additional rebars, and this, from our perspective, is a gap on the need for more research on the use of conventional materials such as concrete and steel, which we invest in detail. Methodology is the we did various tests on constituent materials, prepared a concrete mix design, cast our box, did various lab tests on fresh and hardened concrete, our beams, retrofitted them, and did our thickening. In line with our first objective. We did material properties, uh, steel and concrete lab. This was the tensile test. Uh, this was us doing the sieve analysis. And then we did the child mix. And then we cast three beams of 150 by 200 by 1500 and, re and reinforced them with 12 members. This was the beam preparation in the lab. And then we painted our beam that they cured for easy visibility of cracks when loading. This was us doing the compressive test. And mm -hmm. the beams were then cast and tested under four-point static loading. These are some of the apparatus that were used during the loading process. Then we observed some flexural cracks after loading and outlined them for easier visibility. Our retrofitting process, we exposed the original bars by chipping and then welded on addition bars. And these are, are our retrofitted beams which we plastered to cover. And then we loaded them and outlined the cracks. For our results and discussion, we prepared some graphs for our fine and cost aggregates and found out that they were well graded. Then these are the ratios that we did for our cost mix and our slam test values. These are our compression test results for the trial mix and the other test. These are the tensile test data and analysis for our steel. Beam's behavior defined after editing. So using the data we got from lab, we had graphs of flexion versus load in MATLAB, and we found that for each uh, beam, at a specific load, if you compared the deflection that was be there before retrofitting and after retrofitting, there was a reduction. So we used two approaches to analyze our results. The first one was the first crack method of analysis, comparing the load at which the first crack was observed before retrofitting and after retrofitting. So, uh, for example, our first beam, which was retrofitted by eight mm bars, before retrofitting it, the first crack was observed at 978 kilonewtons, and after retrofitting, the first crack was observed at 1660 kilonewtons. This uh, was a 70 percentage change in that first crack, and similarly for the ones retrofitted at 10 and 12, there was a 156 percentage change and one hour percentage change. Our 12. Uh, our second approach involved comparing the number of cracks before and after retrofitting at the maximum load applied. For instance, for the beam, for our first beam, the maximum load applied was 1432, and the number of cracks observed at that load was, was 7. After retrofitting with the 8 mm bar, the maximum load was 1571, and the number of cracks were 4. Visibly, the maximum load applied before retrofitting was lower than the maximum load applied after retrofitting, yet the number of cracks reduced from a value of 7 to 4. Similarly, for our second and third beam, the maximum load applied before retrofitting was still lower than those applied after retrofitting, and the number of cracks still reduced from 8 to 62, and this is an actual increase in the beam capacity. 
In line with our second objective, we prepared bar charts showing load variations at first crack before and after retrofitting. And for all the three beams, they registered an increase in uh, load at first crack. And this is that welding does increase the beam capacity. In line with our third objective, we prepared bar charts showing the percentage increase in strength of the retrofitted beams. From, from the bar chart, we saw that the beam retrofitted a member showed the highest increase in strength. And from our expectations, we expected the beam retrofitted the top a member. One minute remaining, one minute. Would yield the highest increase in strength. However, this was due to the fact that the beam three was concrete that had a higher slump value. And the strength increase was still significant comparing the weaker concrete and this shows that the beam actually performed well. So our conclusion, welding on all rivers can successfully be used to strengthen reinforced concrete beams and higher diameter bars do lead to more in strength. Also note the beams that were retrofitted with 12 members registered a percentage decrease in cracks. Recommendations, future researchers could vary the concrete strength, they could also vary the beam dimensions or load the test specimens to ultimate failure, they could also try different world positions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. Before I will come, questions from the panel members. Uh, I can see Dr. Jinia Kabubo is together with us. Karibu Sana, Director. Thank you very much for joining us. For, for those who have uh, presented number six, eh? I hope you have seen that comment by, by Dr. Kabubo. There was an objective which seems more like activity. The previous group. Yes, so note yes. that. Note that. Uh, and again, uh, oh, that's all for that. Uh, for this presentation, uh, I would like to welcome uh, comments from the panel member. I don't know whether, uh, Dr. Kabubo, you can start it for us. This is in retrofitting. If you're in a position. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tari. The, this is a team also number seven. Eh? Yeah. The comparison is actually an activity, not uh, an objective, eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. if we budget two, two objectives are acceptable at this level, comparison is actually um, an activity, not, not an objective, eh? But uh, we get your, your point. Now, yes. what I wanted to know from this team, eh? Mm -hmm. What was the original, the original beam was uh, with what, 12? Yes. yes. Okay, so why did you say you could not double the, the capacity at uh, after adding the, the Y12? Pardon? You should have doubled the capacity when you did the, when you added Y12. But mm -hmm. uh, apparently the, the, the stronger strength was with Y10s. Yeah, yeah we explained that the beam retrofitted of the member had a higher slump value. So the concrete was weaker for that batch. So, 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 so you had a more water element ratio in the in the in the white house. The the third beam, which was the one that repeated with twelve members, was casted using mm. a concrete that had a higher slum. Due to a higher slum means, means a higher a higher water cement ratio. Uh, the yeah, more water was added due to technical issues that occurred in the lab during casting but you know you know the strength of concrete varies without a cement ratio isn't it it changes yes yes but this is a fracture yeah mm -hmm. okay see the, the well the, the report was good and uh, it's good work maybe you need to more Thank straight you. to more comments on that because uh, the variation is quite uh, quite a bit eh? yeah yeah, it's quite a bit actually. I mean, the 10 and the 12 is a whole mm. range of difference. Yeah, you need to just look at your literature straight and more, and uh, we need a better explanation for the for the 12, the 12, 10 uh, difference. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Just looking to it, that is what the presentation was very good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Director. Uh, <coughs> Eugenio Odero, any comment on this? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I, I think uh, the, this is a uh, good work which uh, the presenters have, uh, have given out. Uh, I think we need to learn more of this kind of study so that at least uh, uh, we see a difference. 
Yeah, now, yeah exactly. Now, on uh, your, just on the presentation, which was generally okay, but uh, on the data, uh, one of the mm -hmm. slides you are presenting the deflection versus uh, uh, load. Um, I'm just wondering, could it not be the other way, load versus uh, deflection? Oh. Maybe you, you can check that again. Uh, yeah, yeah, that back. one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that, that, that maybe if you could present load versus deflection, uh, it could be much better. Yeah. Then uh, on the choice, maybe in the future, on the choice of uh, choice of the material or the the reinforcement to be welded back, uh, have you thought about maybe what are factors which dictate the choice of the reinforcement that should be used to to do the the retrofitting or welding. Maybe yeah, no thought, but maybe that's something for the future. You may give it a, a thought. But otherwise, your presentation was okay, and your study is uh, is okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, just a few comments. Eh? I'm looking at the, my list here, number seven. It seems like you changed your title. Eh? Yes, we changed our title uh, during the proposal from the plastic hinge to Flexural tension of yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Then eh, I'm looking at the the original title that I'm seeing. Eh? Yeah. You, 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 are, you are reinforcing after the the uh, you, you are reinforcing or retrofitting after the reinforcement has developed uh, or the beam has developed a plastic hinge. Eh? Yeah. So in this now research, eh, I wanted to know when at what stage did you uh, say now because I believe you are testing the beam first, yeah. then it, it fails. Mm then you retrofit is it yeah because that's, that's what will happen on site like you want to retrofit something that is the structurally deficient is it yeah so in your experiment how did you determine like now at this stage this beam has failed and then i need to retrofit we observed the number of cracks we used the cracks to to figure out that mm. yeah so we were comparing the cracks that we were observing before retrofitting and after retrofitting and noted the difference. And uh, we saw that there was a reduction in num the number of cracks at higher loads the second time. So that is how we came up with our conclusions. Oh, that's interesting because it's subjective. Eh? Because it's, it's based on, uh, it's based, based on, <laughs> you might be reinforcing. Of course, uh, um, the reinforcement might not have yielded, is it? Basic yes. essential it yeah. have not because yeah. of course uh, even the power ratios of concrete and steel are quite different. Eh? Yeah. Now, okay, I I, I would like to go into detail about that eh, because of course you changed the title, but it's it's an interesting point to decide when to retrofit. The other thing is that uh, after when you are retrofitting, you you remove the concrete so that you can expose the rebar. Eh? So yeah. uh, you covered that. You are saying you covered that using plaster only mortar. Uh, we used a mixture of fine aggregates mm. and also we added a, cost, a, a few a smaller diameter cost aggregates and cement. Oh, that's what I was concerned because I was thinking if you just use the mortar, then uh, you've changed the composition of concrete, the behavior. No, we, we also did it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, that, that, that's okay, but uh, it, it's an interesting work, and uh, we commend people and future uh, the graduate student to, to go this structural way so that uh, we, we do some uh, reasonable investigation. All right, thank you. You can exit. Before you leave, huh? Before you leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, the, the, this, this research is actually two in one, eh? Yeah. In, because they're also, you know, investigating the effect of uh, rebuilding the beam, eh? Yeah. You know the, the board between the new adult concrete, although yeah. it's, it was not there made there eh, because uh, that has been done as a separate research some time back, mm. and then the reinforcement. You see, because yeah. uh, there, there's some tests which have been done effectiveness of uh, of the board between the new adult concrete, mm. Mm -hmm. and then now the rebar. So so actually it's commendable that uh, they are combining two tests in one, which is uh, which is good. But uh, as you say, the co the new concrete should have matched matched with there. Uh, with the, yeah, with the other hand, yeah, because you see there could be deflection issues. Yeah. Because when you when you change the 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 E for the for the new concrete, then you have uh, you have challenges in the in the composite action. Eh? Yes. Yeah.
Yeah, so so it is it's fairly good. And uh, look at look at the effect of uh, changing the concrete. You just mentioned it somewhere in your in your discussion. Yeah, that uh, you also looked into. And of course, I I guess you cured the the beam fully after rebuilding. Yeah. Yes. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Uh, so you can exit. Thank you for your presentation. So that we move to serial number eight. It's uh, at 9.57, you can start, five minutes. Structural performance of concrete beams reinforced with molten, recycled plastic and sand re was being presented by me. Denise and... Uh, Yes. So uh, this is uh, what we we will look at. From there, we start with the background information. Research has shown that with time, still riba is very susceptible to to oxidation when 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 exposed to chlorides, which could result to a structural failure with time. Then next to the problem next to the problem statement and justification, we see that that plastic sand rebus have relatively low density hence hence has lesser clothes to the to the to the overall structure then the overall objective was that the main aim of this of this study is to ah says the the structural behavior of beams reinforced with with plastic sand rebus and to compare the mechanical properties of of steel and uh, plastic sand rebus the the scope and the limitations was in forming and shaping plastic sand re bars and carrying out tests on beams in the club and uh, that is our literature review and the far corner to the right that was our creation. critique and the re such gap was that the use of plastic sand has not been done and uh, and uh, that the use use of cheap and readily are available ma materials should be considered. So this is uh, our research methodology. Uh, we prepared the molds then plastic and sand mix was mixed at uh, and heated at 480 degrees celsius then the molten plastic and sand mix was poured into the mold and compressed then we did a couple of laboratory tests uh, for example of the tensile test on the steel with plastic sand river also did deflection test on beams enforced with steel rivers and the plastic sand rivers so as you can see this is a sand and plastic mixture then it was, it was fed to the crusher then on the other side it came out as molten plastic and sand mixture the 
molten plastic sand uh, mixture was rolled and then placed into the mold then we compressed it and after that we cooled it then we removed it in the far right you can see the foam river so we went to the lab to cast uh, we used, uh, obtained a slump of 41 and uh, used some molds to cast the three beams. We had a control, then we had steel and uh, plastic sand ribbers as the enforcement. Yeah. Then uh, after that, we did a steel tensile test. As you can see, we did it on the far left. You can see the image. Then after that, we also did a tensile test on the plastic sand ribber. And this is a tabulated uh, result of the tensile test on both the plastic and sand, plastic sand river and the steel river. From there, we did a uh, four point loading on the three beams. This is a load versus deflection graph. Then, this is a tabulated uh, deflection test on the three beams. And from there, we move on to one the minute remaining, one minute. Okay. From the graph, it is evident that the steel bar river has a higher tensile strength compared to the plastic sand river. Then we look at the performance of beams. The beams reinforced with steel has a higher deflection span with increasing load, giving it a desirable lecture, vectoral behavior. The beam reinforced with plastic sand rubber has a very low deflection span compared to the beam reinforced with steel rubber, which has a defle higher deflection sp span. This is due to how, the how brittle the plastic sand rubber is. Uh, this is a conclusion. Plastic sand rubbers are not suitable for using concrete members to deal with tension, and we recommend that plastic should not be used to form rubbers unless an extra compound is added to enhance the overall tensile strength. This is some of our references. Uh, thank you. Uh, from this point, we are open to take any questions from the Okay, members. okay, okay. That's, that's, uh, that's okay. So let's get questions from the members. Eugene Odero. Oh, okay. Thank you for that presentation. Maybe I don't have comment for now. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether... Eugene uh, Kabubo, uh, you are still together with us. Yeah, good. Yes, yes, yes. The, the objectives are still, they should be reframed, eh? Okay. Same concept, but you see, they are still, they have still objectives to compare, to compare. Let him reframe the, remaining the same, in the same, in the same way, whatever, but then to reframe them in terms of uh, description, compare, compare is, uh, is actually activities. Mm. Uh, then, because you see, the, the activities will then be just to compare, okay? But the objectives would be something, and then it comes to compare. The other thing is uh, the molten sand and the, and the plastic, it was being used uh, exclusively without any other form of uh, reinforcement. Pano, guys? Yes, uh, yes. Well, what do you think it exclusively? Uh, we were trying to curb the oxidation on steel. We were trying to avoid steel. Yeah, I can see steel and there's, there's, there's corrosion. Yes, yes. But what I'm asking. Okay. My question is this, eh? Yes. The plastic, the plastic uh, and the and the sand. We are using it uh, exclusively without without other reinforcement. Yes, yes. We used it. Okay. Exclusive. And now, what what informed that? Because you see, uh, in which we probably look for a gap. Eh? Has anybody tried to use it as a as a tensile material? No. Oh, okay. How did you get the idea? <laughs> so we saw uh, that the, this has been used previously on paper blocks and we wanted to test it but to see if it can be able to be a more compressive. Yes, yes, compressive. yes. Compressive. Talk about uh, the uh, Yes. Come again? I'm saying. Most of the paper blocks, eh? Yes, most of the tests that have been they, done. They fail in compression, compression. mainly. Yeah. Video. Yes, yes. So how did you how did you think you can use them in intention? Uh, we felt like 
due to the solid the material is after today i'm saying after i'm saying we felt that after the solid i mean after the material has cooled down and after compression mm -hmm. the the material is, is quite solid so we decided to maybe test it to see if it can be able to withstand tensile mm -hmm. stresses yeah, solid but uh, compressive CDO. solid but compressive yes yes oh, no more questions okay thank you okay uh mr joke yeah um maybe the, um, they, they they could have tried using this uh this material on you know the top of the beam for you know to to to, to enhance the compressive uh, capacity of the beams eh? yes, yes. compressive reinforcement eh? yes, you could have uh, maybe checked that to see if it enhances it in any way okay okay thank you okay all right, uh, we stop it at that. We move to number what? Number 10. We jump number 9 because uh, it's by Mr. Mutua. They're going to present later on. So let's move to number 10. Okay. All right, uh, you can start. It's now 10.42. All right. Our uh, research topic is mixed design of concrete using volcanic turf. Presented by Jesse Morelli and my colleague Peter. Peter Jero. Supervised by... Dr. Naftali Gadeba. Ah, yeah. Popularity of concrete as a construction material has led to increased demand of sand, thus leading to alternate of sand. Popularity of concrete as construction material has led to increased demand of sand, thus leading to alternate use of sand. Choice of organic tough sand has come in place as the replacement. According to Yang Kin, 2019, there is dynamic phenomena which affect concrete directly, which include earthquake storms and flooding and ground movement. Quality of concrete, quality of concrete, quality of concrete we investigated in the research were durability and strength. Durability is the resistance of weathering due to environment condition. Strength is the ability of resisting bending after loading is applied. Determination of concrete strength was carried out using destruction, de destructive and non-destructive test. Destructive step test was done using the universal testing machine, which we, we were able to test the compressive, tensile, and flexural strength. Non-destructive tests used the speed hammer, where we were able to obtain the, the compression strength. Recommended problem statement and justification. Recommended Recommended material properties of volcanic tough sand at 64% with partial replacement was present. Hence, regarding full replacement, thus promoting identifying of a required mix proportion to be used. Objectives. Main objective to evaluate mixed design of concrete using volcanic tough sand as fine aggregate. Specific objectives were to compare the properties of volcanic tough sand as replacement for river sand in concrete components. Objective two was to, de to design a mix, to, to design a concrete mix using volcanic tough sand as fine aggregate. Objective number three was to determine the characteristics of fresh concrete and hardened concrete using volcanic tough sand. Scope of the study. Study is limited to examination of utilization of VTS as a replacement for river sand and its consequent mix design. The study focuses on the mechanical and physical properties of hardened concrete using VTS. On the summary of empirical view, uh, we actually studied about uh, some few others. The first one is, is we studied on effect of water, cement ratio on compressive strength and workability of concrete. The other one, evaluation of uh, concrete quality using destructive and destructive tests. The other one was property of fresh concrete on hand and concrete. The contribution of the current study, the current study provides uh, evaluation of mixed design of concrete using volcanic tough without without replacement. It focuses not, not only the strength but specific use of volcanic tough sand aggregates. It also adopts the experimental approach to obtain new knowledge to, to complement earlier research. In the methodology, we use the BRIE mixed design where we obtain the characteristics of uh, strength 
and standard deviation we had where we determine the targeted mean strength and having the cement and water contact that specific gravity we obtained the weight density of the concrete where we did the combination and de determined a weight of the all materials required where we are able to obtain the water weight of the water cement coarse aggregate and weight of the sand in fresh concrete we obtained the we, we were able to conduct the SRAM test where we are able to obtain the workability where workability is the property of fresh mixed concrete which is determined is and homogeneity of at which it can be mixed pressed consolidated and finished and this can be affected by size of the aggregate final size of the aggregate in coarse and uh, fine aggregate and also the affection of the water cement ratio in hardened concrete we are able to conduct the smith hammer and in, and uh, we are used we are, we are able to use to use the smith hammer to conduct the compressive strength and determine the edge of the concrete we are using the utm machine we are able to determine the fractional tense and compression strength on result and an analysis for specific one, one gravity minute, mainly one minute for specific gravity <laughs> specific gravity of material also known as uh, particle density helps to determine overall density of the finished concrete remember we use the bs812 1995 uh, in the graph shown eh, whereby we have the two materials the vts and uh, the the river sand and they are within the range of uh, the, the recommended range uh, where we found that uh, the material grinding condense or was in accordance with the with the bs 1992 in workability the thrump the workability was affected by water content and water cement ratio so in increase of the water the workability was declined for cube strength development the compression strength result was in accordance to BS 12390 to 2003 showed that strength increased steadily from 7 to 14 days, then slightly constant from 14 to 21, day, 21 days. Then, I think, the, the, then uh, from, from 21 to 28, the increase was in a small margin. Then the tensile strength, then. Eh? Where you used to conclude, conclude, please conclude. Conclusion. Concrete mix design of organic tough can be utilized in modern structural difficulties. Desired strength for five adopted adopted in the ratios of one is to one is to two. Volcanic tough sad exhibits pozoranic qualities, which are which were evident in the VTS. In fractional loading, the failure of type concrete was elastic and was after applying the load it was sudden and brittle in crack making the strain calculated by the smith hammer was found to be approximately 16 mpa lower than the compressive strain obtained via utm machine in our recommendation further research on maintaining water content constant and improving pasteurizer to produce the necessary workability and then estimating how strength will be affected although the study has only taken in account of portland cement it would be interesting to see how modified concrete performs when other cement types are utilized this study focused solely on 20, class 25 which was re regarded to be bare minimum of the structural requirement thus it would be beneficial to explore other numerous classes of concrete okay okay thank you for that i will come comments from uh, the panel members let me begin eh? yes yes you know that. Uh, i'm just having a feeling that uh, the, the, the mixed design which is elaborated in your title you really did not bring it out well in your presentation i think you should have told us more about how you carried out the mix design yeah based on your new material vt vts so i did not see that unless maybe you have some explanation to give mix that one. That one, okay. Yes. Okay. 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 I think 
I, I see what you are bringing out, but now, I don't know, yes. you did not explain what was the effect of mixed design? How did it affect your, your results also? Okay. When we, think, think about that. Okay, when we use the normal mixed design of class 25, eh, the result that we obtained at the end, the VTS was failing. So we had to readjust the ratioing so that we, obdo we adopted a new ratio, which was 1 is to 1 is to 2 compared to one and one and a half to three, which is recommended okay. in the BS standards. Okay. All right, uh, other comments? Uh, uh, something else, slide number 13, eh? You told us uh, you could determine the age of concrete using the shimmered hammer. Yes. How, how can you do that? Look at, look at this, eh? Yes. How, how do you determine the age using a hammer? Okay, after we, we, we took the, the test, the knocks from the concrete, mm. we were able to read from the graph which was attached to in the Smith hammer itself. There's a graph. And give the test uh, an age. Then we were able to see the in reference of the days of the concrete. Were you able to determine the, the age? Does the, does, the, does the hammer give you the, 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 the age of the concrete? The 28th day, uh, when the concrete had mature, and it really showed that for the control mix, which is the river sand, mm. it, it really showed uh, uh, around 27, uh, which was about the 25 uh, newton per meter square strength. You are not answering my question. Yes. You use the hammer to test the, the, the strength, but not the age. Okay, you can that. And the other thing is, you t in the conclusion, eh, you told us that, uh, you know, you got uh, a lower strength using um, the hammer, isn't it? In your conclusion, you got a lower strength using the hammer, isn't it? Uh, how was that? Yes. Yeah, the, the last the conclusion, eh? Yes. It's still MPA lower than the compressive strength obtained by the UTM uh, testing machine, eh? Yes. How do you explain that? Yeah. I think it was finding it for the VTS. That, that, this is for the VTS, eh? Yeah. This, this, this was the comparison between the VTS and the normal river side, eh? But then I'm when saying, you, you know, you see you, here, the, this yes. conclusion. Yes. Concrete, and, you know, what you're saying is that uh, if, even if it was some other uh, form, uh, type of concrete, yes, you're telling us that you could have used, obtained a, a lower strength using the hammer. Okay, what, what, what you are trying to do? Did you, did you calibrate the hammer at all? Yes, we did. But then how could this have been? Because you see, why, why would you say, normal, what's the normal use of a hammer or a hammer test? To check compressive strength. Yes, but you see now, if, if you are going to have a strength which makes sense, yes, you have to calibrate the hammer. And it's expected yes. that uh, the, the strength you get the from the calibrated hammer approximates or very close to the, what you'd get if you did a crushing strength from the yes. UTM or, or whatever the machine. Okay, that's understood. Yeah, you need to, you need to actually check your work on that. Eh? Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Joki, any comment? Okay. So, so just to clarify here, Jesse, yes. I am wondering this statement. Do you want to tell us that there is a difference of 16 MPA for the same concrete when I do destructive test and when I use the Smith Hammer and destructive? Is that no. what you mean? No, this one was uh, when we did the concrete with using the normal sand uh -huh. and we tested it. We did the crushing and the using the rebound hammer test also. Then we did the same concrete mix using the, we did the test of now the VTS with the normal ratios. That's what we got the difference of 16 MPA. That's not what you have written here. What you are saying the 16 is the difference between the normal concrete and the one with VTS, is it? Yes. But now what you have written is like if I is the test the same concrete 
but you are testing you know that i found that uh, you are you are framing you are you are, even throughout your presentation you are you are confusing yourself the, the choice of words because i believe the 16 the way you are explaining is not how you have written it here and that's why you are confusing engineer yeah this yeah, is yeah, the I difference know. between two concrete mixes two different concrete mixes mixes one with the normal riverside the other one with vts is it yes but now you are saying it's the same concrete but with the different test methods which is not true but that's what you have written here yes we have noted that okay remember we are holding marks eh? <laughs> okay. all right all right let's stop it at that uh, you can exit <laughs> remove your presentation so that we can uh, move to slide and uh serial number 14 eh? yes all right thank you so um number 14 Zero two sixty. You are ready. We are ready. Okay. You are the presenter. Okay. It's now eleven. Five minutes. You can start. Okay. I am Gibayo Dennis Derito. And my name is Gibayo Shua. Our project is the performance of reinforced recycled plastic lumber as an alternative timber, and our supervisor is Dr. Alimba. Uh, in the recent past, timber has gained popularity in the construction industry due to its versatility and also to the fact, due to the fact that it is a renewable natural resource. It is also non-toxic and easy to work with. However, the increased demand for timber has led to uncontrolled logging, which stretches our diminishing forest resources, leading to deforestation. Therefore, there is need to find an alternative material so as to reduce the reliance on timber and also save our forests. Uh, in the recent, over the years, various researchers have carried out research on the potential plastic recycling. The implementation of these researches has led to the production of recycled plastic lumber, which is a material made in the standard timber specifications. However, the limitation of most recycled plastic lumber is their own modulus, and there are two types of modulus. One is the modulus of rupture, which is the measure of a specimen strength before rupture, and the other one is modulus of elasticity, which is the resistance to bending, deflection, which is relative to stiffness. Now to improve low, low modulus, various researches has been done. One is the addition of sawdust, second is the addition of, of sand. On our proposal, we, we shall add the fiber wires from the tires. A few years ago, the government of Kenya has banned the uncontrolled logging to curb the deforestation. In the wake of the, the ban, alternative timber would be very timely. The cycled plastic has been investigated previously, but its weakness is low modular, modulus. And to improve on it, a tire wire strands shall be used. The general objective is to investigate the performance of reinforced cycled plastic lumber as an alternative timber. The specific objective is to determine the mechanical properties of timber, reinforced cycled plastic lumber, and uh, conventional timber, and also to care to con Compare the cost. Compare the cost of timber, conventional, conventional timber, and enforce recycled plastic lumber. The scope and limitation. The study will focus on the reportable test based on material investigation and the data. The literature review. This is the contribution of various researchers to the to the topic, and the summary of the research done. While appreciating the work of various researchers, low modulus of recycled plastic lumber inhibits in the application as a structural member. There have been attempts to improve the raw modulus by trying combination of different materials, e.g., fiber reinforced RPL and wood filled RPL. This study has been carried out by reinforcing recycled plastic lumber using wire sands as their good intention, hence providing alternative timber, plastic, and other waste management in the country. On research and methodology, first we do the collection of material and the fabrication of bone, melting of plastic, squeezing of the molten plastic into a mold, and addition of wire, wire fibers into a molten plastic, and then labotizer. Here are the, the pictorial of the fabricated bones, and the second pictorial is the uh, mold with, with with the enforcement that is still one. This is the methodology we do HDB plastic material collection, shredding, and then the then the 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 pictorial of the the melting of the plastic will be done by the extrusion process, 
and maybe the injection mold process here we have the squeezing of the molten plastic into the mold and finally the cast and plastic rubber the test that will be conducted is the compressive test for the three samples the bending test of the three samples which is the modulus of rupture and the modulus of elasticity cost analysis will be carried out by comparing market prices of conventional timber and reinforced recycled plastic and then reinforced recycled plastic lumber while carrying out cost analysis the designer must size the members in the plastic lumber structure larger than for a wooden structure a one-to-one -one substitution is not allowable yeah so the analysis that uh, according to our uh, first objective that is to, to do compressive strength of the timber as our control, then I'll, I'll, I'll be only first plastic lumber and I'll first plastic lumber. On Tiba, we, ha we had 61.38 megapascal, LPR 22.39 megapascal, UPR 20.75 megapascal. Also, we carried out the, the, the compressive test and determined the modulus of rupture for the three samples. Timber had a modulus of rupture of 64.53 megapascals. The psychoplastic rubber had a megapascal of 10.02, and UPL had a modulus of rupture of 9.08. On module of elasticity, the Tiba has an average of 1851 megapascal. LPL has that one, three that 1.4 megapascal. UPL has that in 16. Now here's the comparison of, of how the, the materials compare to each other. And we can see clearly from this chart that timber is, has a more compressive strength than the other materials that is reinforced plastic rubber and then reinforced plastic rubber. On M1 module of elasticity, timber has the highest, uh, followed by LPL. But uh, the last one was UPL and reinforced plastic. Also for the modulus of elasticity, we found that timber had a very high modulus of elasticity as compared to the other specimens of reinforced plastic rubber and unreinforced okay, plastic. Okay, one minute, one minute, please. The main reason for this is because the plastic rubber did not cool uniformly, whereas the, the upper part was a solid core as compared to the center of the material which was more porous and not as strong as the other one. This is the price comparison of the samples. Timber has a price of 59 shillings per foot. For the eco post, which is compared under factory conditions, it is 100 shillings per foot. And for samples, they cost 406 shillings per foot. The conclusion. You can be concluded from the test that the engineering property of recycled plastic lumber tested suggested that the reinforced recycled lumber cannot substitute the timber structural work that can be used for non-structural work, e.g. fencing post, industrial pallet, sign post, etc. Although the reinforced site improved the compressive and bedding strength of the, the modulus, MOE and MOR was still valuable to compare to the timber. To improve on its module, further tests to be done by incorporating labor or addition of filler such as fiberglass need of to be aggressively explored if this product is to be utilized in structural application. Okay, all right. Um, a question from the panel members, uh, Eugenia Kabubo, uh, Eugenia Odero. Uh, no, no comment for now. Uh, Mr. Joke. Yeah, yeah, I think the, the, the work is good, uh, but I would just like to comment that um, actually once you you have confirmed something which is uh, is uh, essentially ignored, that timber is actually a very robust construction material, and maybe we should be doing more research on uh, the various ways we can enhance the use of timber in construction since that's the one that's the one material we have control over eh? as far as uh, reproducing is concerned so so maybe that's for the future to see how we can actually um, embrace timber more in our construction industry <laughs> okay um what i can also say is that um, you know we are, we are reducing you are, we are reducing the use of old products eh, which is good eh? yes you know because uh, you see you've not been able to use this material as a as as a, as a timber but you know 
zero on the fact that you're replacing a wood product because you see the logging was to stop uh, us use uh, the, the wood product. Eh? Yes. Okay, so so you're saying that uh, basically you can you can reduce the use of wood products if you are going to use poles for this. Yes. You can allow the, the poles, you know, the timber to, to grow up. You know, yes. it's, it's one one use of uh, wood product which is eliminated, which is actually quite a contribution. So okay. maybe you could have also change your title. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could change your title because yes. you see you've not gotten uh, the material as timber, but you're saying yes. trying to replace the use of wood products, which eventually become, you know, which should be conserved to use uh, for this for structural purposes. Okay. So you are giving us a replacement, which is which is a which is a good thing. Okay. So look at your title with your supervisor. Yes. Because at least you've given us some contribution. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And then to all other presenters, this is not a proposal. This is not its final presentation. We do not want to see your budget and time frame. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The other so thing is, uh, we don't want to see to compare to compare. Please, eh? Okay. We don't yes. any, any comparison. Okay. That's not an objective. It's an activity. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you can exit so that we move to.